Hey everybody, it's Boo Ray Perry from Tampa, Florida, and today we are going to talk about flash. Or specifically, we're going to talk about bounce flash with the Fuji X100F and the Godox TT350 flash. A little bitty small flash that Godox makes that's just perfect for the Fuji X100F. Now before we get started, don't forget that everything you need to know about me as well as all of the gear that I carry is all listed in the description right below this video. Just go down there and click on the description and you will get a link to my website. And on my website, I list every piece of gear that I use not only in my travel kit when I'm carrying my X100F, but also all the professional gear that I use when I'm shooting weddings and events and portraits with my Canon gear. It's all right there on my website. And if you click on something and you buy it from Amazon, then I get like a nickel and I can use that to buy a new lens cap. So uh, please check out everything that's on the gear page uh, on Blu-rayPerry.com. Hey, also don't forget that I have a fantastic podcast. We've been doing it for five years now. Me and Gary Hughes, it's called Photobomb, and it's available anywhere that podcasts are found. I would strongly encourage you to check that out. It's a great thing to listen to when you're in the car or sitting around doing some editing or something like that. Uh, it's called Photobomb. Great podcast. You're going to love it. And be sure and join my group on Facebook. It is called Pro Photo Talk with Blu Ray Perry. All right, so let's talk about the Fuji X100F and let's talk about putting a flash on this camera. The thing about the Fuji is it is such a wonderful camera for street photography and for taking around and carrying around and being very uh, quiet. People don't notice that you're there. It doesn't draw much attention and that's wonderful. But if you're a full-time professional photographer like me, you feel very limited by the flash because it's a direct flash, it's a small flash, it's right above the lens. And it just doesn't give you the results that you really want to have when you're using a flash. And it's a tough trade-off because if you add a flash to the camera, now suddenly you don't really have the same form factor. It's, it's not as small. It's not as cool. But at the same time, you can really do some incredible things with the flash. So what I'm hoping to do today is kind of convince you that you might want to think about getting a flash for this camera. Because even if you don't use it all the time, even if you only use it sometimes, and, and I don't use mine very often, when you want to use it, it can really, really affect your images. All right, so let's start off by taking a look at some images shot with the Fuji X100F, and we'll go from there. So the first thing I did was I grabbed my daughter and I took her into my studio and I tried to take a picture without any flash whatsoever. So as you can see, I'm wide open at f2.0. I'm at 1 30th of a second on my shutter speed and my ISO is at 3200, which is pretty high for the Fuji. You're going to get some uh, some grain and some noise in your picture. And so this is what I ended up getting of my daughter. It's, it's clear that we are going to need some flash to make this picture better. So the next step is to turn on the built-in flash that comes with the Fuji X100F. Oh, I guess I should have put on the red eye reduction feature on the camera. So this is what happens when you don't use the red eye reduction feature. You get wide open pupils and you get a huge blowback of the flash in the eyes. Now you can reduce this by turning on the red eye reduction, but for the purposes of this little video, I really don't care what the eyes look like. It's the light that I'm really interested in. So this is direct flash coming from the Fuji camera, the Fuji built-in flash, and this is what you get. And well, she's lit now, and you can see I also changed my settings. I'm at f2.8, 1 60th of a second, and I lowered my ISO to 1600 because these are better settings. At f2.8, I'm not so worried about depth of field. At 1 60, I'm not so worried about camera shake. And at 1600, I am going to get a better quality image because the lower the ISO is, uh, the better the image is going to be, and you're going to have less grain and less noise. So this is clearly unacceptable as well. Well, hold on a minute there, Boo Ray, you might be saying to yourself. What do you mean it's clearly unacceptable? She's lit, right? It's the correct exposure, right? Isn't that what you want from a flash? Well, that's just the beginning of what you want from a flash. And this is really what separates professional photographers from people who are just amateurs or serious hobbyists, is that professional photographers tend to really care about the light, the quality of the light, the direction of the light, and so forth. And so for a professional photographer, it's not acceptable at all, even though for many people it's perfectly acceptable. And it's certainly acceptable if what you're used to seeing is pictures taken with a cell phone and that little tiny LED that they have on the back of your cell phone. But if you're a pro, this is unacceptable light. So out comes the flash. And now we're going to pull out the flash from Godox. This is the TT350 flash. And we're going to put this on the camera and we're going to put it direct flash. So it's basically doing the same thing that the flash in the camera was doing, except now it's coming from a bigger light source uh, that's on top of the camera. And here's what we get. 
Now we've got a bigger light source and certainly we have a more powerful light source. I uh, haven't changed the settings on my camera. They're going to stay the same throughout the rest of the pictures that you see here. And so you've got a better light source and, and it looks a bit nicer, but it's still direct flash. It's still coming directly at my subject from the camera and you can tell it's direct flash well because it looks like it. But also if you look under her chin, you see how that shadow is universal all the way across her chin. It tells you that the flash is hitting her face dead on and it's the same power at both sides of her face. So it is direct flash coming straight into her. It's better than what we had on the camera. Well, it's a little bit better. We can put those two pictures up side by side and look at them. I think it's a little bit better, sure. But it's still not really what we can do once we have mounted this flash. I just want to point out real quick that I'm actually using the digital zoom on the Fuji X100F to take all of these pictures. When you're taking a headshot style picture, you want to back up so that you've got plenty of room for your light to move. You don't want your light source to be very close to your subject. And with the Fuji, since it's a 35 millimeter equivalent lens, that means it's going to be a pretty wide shot and you're going to end up having to crop it in post-production. Well, since the Fuji digital zoom does a fantastic job of cropping and upsizing the file right in the camera, I just went ahead and used it right there on location. I have a whole video about the digital zoom. It's going to be right up here Oh, wait, right up here. <laughs> and you can go check out the video for yourself. We were, we were pretty surprised to find out that the digital zoom and upsizing inside the Fuji camera is every bit as good as Photoshop. So why not use it and save yourself the extra step later? So my next step was to take the flash, which I was pointing it straight ahead with no cap, and to go ahead and bounce it up at 45 degrees. This is the standard bounce ratio when you're going to bounce light forward onto a subject. Bounce it at 45 degrees. And I put the cap on the lens, on the uh, flash, that comes with it. Uh, because this helps to diffuse the light more. And it also helps to direct some of your light forward to fill in the face. And this is kind of a standard way that you see a lot of people at weddings and events. That they will walk around and this is how that they will shoot almost all of their pictures. So what does that look like? All right, now we are starting to cook. We're getting better light now. We're bouncing the flash up 45 degrees towards our subject, which is giving us a nice downward light. And we're using the cap on the front of the flash, which is going to throw some light forward to fill in the shadows on the face. And this is better. Certainly it's better. Let's take a quick look back in time, shall we? Let's go look at the first thing that we did with the flash that was built into the Fuji X100F. And then we took the flash and put it on the camera and actually pointed it directly at our subject. And then we bounced it 45 degrees up towards our subject with a cap. And this is what we got. The light is getting better, but we're going to kick it up a notch, as they say, by bringing in a bounce card. The bounce card that I use is the Dim Flip It. And there's a link on my page. If you just go down to the description, click to my page, and you can find this little device. I use this little tiny Dim Flip It when I'm using this flash here with my Fuji X100F, and I use a much larger one when I'm shooting on location with my professional gear, my Canon gear, when I'm shooting weddings and events and bar mitzvahs and stuff. So the way this thing works is you mount it on the long ends of the flash, and there's a reason that you mount it on the long end of the flash like this, and it's so that you can go to an angle if you want to go to an angle. Say, so if you put it on this side here, you can't do that. If it was here, you, can, you can't tilt, right? So you put it here, and this way, you can turn it if you want to. So, put the dim flip it on, point it straight at the ceiling, with the card coming forward a little bit to throw a little light forward, and this is what you get. Now we are really starting to see something. You'll notice here that the light is coming primarily from the ceiling, and you can tell this because you'll notice that her neck is much darker than it was in the previous picture. And also, if you look at her eyes, you'll see that she's got a little bit more of a bag, what we call raccoon eyes, underneath her eyes. Now I'll kick back to the other picture so you can see the difference. When you're using more direct flash, which is what you were getting by using the cap on the camera and bouncing forward at 45 degrees, you're going to wash the face out more. And there are some people who like this. No, they like to have that face completely washed out with direct light because it takes all those lines away. But I personally just don't think it looks natural. When you look at a picture like this one where you're bouncing straight up and using the bounce card to kick a little fill light forward, I just think it looks more natural and you get more depth because the thing that makes a two-dimensional photograph look three-dimensional is to have areas of light next to areas of dark. It is this contrast between light and dark that fools the human mind into perceiving depth. And this is what makes your pictures look three-dimensional. Still, as nice as this is, and let me tell you, I shoot a lot of pictures like this. When I'm working a wedding or a bar mitzvah, I'm typically just walking around taking snapshots, 
this is the way I have my flash configured on my big Canon camera. And if I'm just taking pictures at a party with my friends, with my little Fuji, I'm probably just walking around like this and taking pictures. However, there's still one more trick in your toolbox, well actually two, that you can do with this flash to do something even more creative. The final way that I configure my camera when I'm walking around and taking snapshots of my friends at a party or a gathering or something like that is I take the bounce card and I flip it back. This is why it's called the flip it, by the way, and why I like it. And I take my flash and I point it back over my right shoulder, just like this. Now, when I'm working professionally, I actually will point the flash over my left shoulder. But the reason is because when you're using a professional camera, you're using the eyepiece here and the flash points here. And you, now, when you're using the Fuji, your eye is over here, so you don't want the flash coming into your forehead. You want it going over here. But the other reason I bounce it over here is that you can't do that. Or can you? Yeah, you can't turn the Fuji, the Godox flash, you can't turn it all the way around to that point. You can only do it over this shoulder, right? So I point it right back there over my right shoulder and I will just bounce off the walls behind me. Now, you can't always do it with the little Fuji, uh, you know, Gonox TT350 flash because it's not as powerful as the big flashes that I use on my professional camera. So you kind of need to be in a small room. With a professional camera and a professional flash, you can be in a giant room and still bounce off walls that are literally 30 feet behind you. But with a little flash, you've got to watch your power. So more often than not, I'm doing this. But if I'm in a small room, I'm doing this. And here's the result. Wow, now we are starting to get some light that looks like it was done with studio lighting, right? And we're doing this with just the Fuji X100F and a Godox TT350 strobe, and we're pointing it over our right shoulder. And if you look at the shadow under her nose, you see how it's moved over now. Instead of being a butterfly pattern, it's moved over a little bit, and it's almost all the way to the edge of her nose. Now, if it was to the edge of her nose, it would be called loop lighting, and that is the classic lighting pattern that is used by every photographer in the world when shooting someone's portrait in a studio. So we're getting very close to that lighting pattern. It's nice, it's soft, there's no specular highlights. It's just a beautiful, beautiful light. And the reason is because by bouncing it off that wall behind us, we are making the light source huge. The light source is now a giant, giant light source. The entire size of the wall that is behind us, and that makes the light sauce source really soft. It also makes for a soft shadow underneath her chin. So let's go back and look at the other one. You see the other image, and let me tell you, this is great. If you're just walking around popping pictures at your kid's birthday party or something, this is a fantastic way to get light. And you don't have to worry about where you're bouncing it. You don't have to worry about where your walls are. You don't have to think about any of that stuff. You can just walk around, pop, 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 and get great lighting and great pictures. But if you want to just take a second and try and get something a little bit nicer, then all you have to do is flip down the flip it and turn that flash and bounce it over your shoulder to get results like this. Now, real quick, I want to point out that I did not spend a lot of time taking these pictures. I literally took two frames for each example. That's it. So don't think that this is really, really hard or tough for you to do. It's not. You can pick it up pretty quick, and then with practice, it becomes second nature. There's one other thing you can do, by the way, besides just bouncing it over your shoulder. Because you can rotate this flash head wherever you want, you can start to be more creative. So after I did these pictures of my daughter to show you how to bounce flash, I decided to show you something else you can do. For example, you can do this. All I'm doing here is pointing the flash to my left so that it bounces off the wall on the other side of the room and then comes back. And you see that you start to get light that can create mood. You know, light that you can use to do something unique or something different or create an effect that you're looking for. Once again, bouncing the flash to my left, bouncing it off the wall, having it come back into her face. And one of the things you want to do when you're taking a picture like this is you want to turn her face towards where the light's going to be coming from, in this case, the wall. And once you start to do stuff like this with a little cropping, you can actually produce some incredible portraits with the little Fuji X100F and a Godox TT350 flash. You'll be amazed at what you can do with the very small amount of gear that you have with you on vacation or just hanging around the house with your kids. If I told you that I shot this in my studio with studio lighting, I think you'd probably believe me. So that's it. It's not really that hard and you can do amazing things just by putting this little Godox TT350 flash on top of your Fuji X100F. For those last two pictures that you saw, this is exactly what I was doing right here. Let me just pull this off real quick for you. There you go. And now you can see it. All I was doing was taking a picture of her just like this and pointing the light over here to the wall and then bouncing it back and letting it come across her face. 
It's really not that tricky. Bounce Flash, I love it and I use it all the time and it really sets my images apart. Now I know that this camera is it's a street camera. It's fun. It's move quick. It's take pictures. And now you're talking about having flash and doing all this other kind of stuff. Sure. And if you don't want to do it, that's great. Because I got to tell you, most of the time I don't use the flash. Most of the time I shoot pure street and I shoot pure photojournalistic with natural light. But every so often I'm in a situation where I need a good picture and I need good light. Like at an award ceremony where they're going to give me an award and I'm hanging out with a bunch of my friends, <laughs> right? I need a good picture. And having that little flash that I can slap on the camera and quickly hand the camera to somebody and say, hey, take our picture, really can make all the difference in the world. So there it is. Once again, links are all available in the description to my website, which has all the gear that you see in the video, even the, even the sun protector that I have on the front of my lens and everything I carry, it's all on my website. So go check it out there. And thanks for watching.